Good evening, everyone. Um, I feel like we need a, a ball out in the narthex to start dropping, you know, because it's, uh, it's the end of the church year. So uh, we're a little bit ahead of the secular schedule, but uh, the first week in Advent is not this weekend, but next weekend. So it's the end of the church year. We're celebrating Christ the King Sunday this week, the last Sunday of the church year. So um, if anybody's got a makeshift ball that we can use to drop on Sunday, that would be great. Um, or next week, I suppose. Uh, so we are continuing our theme of Restore His House, and we have reminded our people that even as we struggle and things happen amid this pandemic, that God has not removed His presence from us, that He is still serving us and graciously giving us all things in our Lord and Savior Jesus. We carry this assurance with us, and uh, I hope that is your assurance as well. And tonight, remembering that the kingdom is yours as we look at the uh, sheep and the goats and who are Christ's brothers. So we'll look at that uh, tonight. Uh, we open up our service this evening by singing our first hymn, Come Thou Almighty King. Please stand as you are able as we continue our service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us, us rejoice, rejoice and, and be, be glad, glad in, it. in it. In the rising of the sun to its setting, the name, the name of, of the Lord, Lord is, is to be praised. praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would, I would rather, rather be a doorkeeper, a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. 
I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. O oh Lord, Lord, make, make me, me know my end, end and, and what, what is, is the measure of my days. days. Let me know how fleeting I am. Behold, you have made my days a few hand breaths, and my lifetime is nothing before you. And now, O oh Lord, for what do I wait? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of the fool. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace at my tears, for I am a sojourner with you, a guest like all my fathers. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In keeping with this promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. Please be seated as we sing our next hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns, again in keeping with our celebration of Christ the King Sunday.
Our Old Testament reading for the last Sunday of the church year comes from the book of Ezekiel, the 34th chapter. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture and in the mountain heights of Israel shall be their graze and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with side and shoulder and thrust at all the weak with your horns, till you have scattered them abroad. I will restore my flock. They shall no longer be a prey, and I will judge between sheep and sheep, and I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, And my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord. I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Our epistle lesson for today comes from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, the 15th chapter. Paul gives us the assurance. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For... God has put all things in subjugation under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjugation, it is plain that he is accepted who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all and in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. I invite you to stand as the Holy Gospel for today is read. The Holy Gospel comes to us today from the 25th chapter of Matthew. We hear these words from Jesus. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. 
Then they also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, Lord, I love love the habitation of your house and the the place place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. We continue by saying the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant, his maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We are now seated for our sermon hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. When I was a little kid, I remember vividly being at my grandmother's house and playing with this one particular toy. That toy was a jack-in-the-box. When the lid was open on that jack-in-the-box, this clown would appear out of that jack-in-the-box on this spring and just kind of waver and bounce back and forth. And so you grab its head and push it down in there and then close the lid on it and then grab that little crank. And you turn that crank and it plays that ridiculous song. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. And as I would do that, each and every time at the exact same moment that lid would pop open and that clown would jump out and it would scare me every single time. I would jump back. I was surprised. And it didn't matter that I knew the exact moment that that was going to open up and that clown was going to come out. It surprised me every time. In our gospel reading for today from Matthew, there's a message here that may surprise you as well. In the reading of the sheep and the goats, it is often thought that what is being taught here is that what makes a person a sheep or goat is based on what they do. But if we look carefully at the words of Jesus, we discover something that may surprise us. Matthew records Jesus' words beginning at verse 31. When the Son of Man came in His glory and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on His glorious throne. Before Him will be gathered all nations, and He will separate the sheep from the goats. And He will place the sheep on His right, but the goats on the left. Then the King will say to those on His right, Come you who are blessed by My Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. What's surprising in this text are these words of Jesus about the sheep. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come you who are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Those who are the sheep, the Father knew them as his sheep, and prepared for them the kingdom from the foundation of the world. Meaning, he chose his sheep. The fact that they are his sheep had nothing to do with what they did. It had nothing to do with how they cared for their neighbors. It had everything to do with the fact that he chose them. He prepared the kingdom for them from the foundation of the world. He chose them, and He chose you. In your baptism, you received the Holy Spirit and came to saving faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus. There you became one of His little lambs. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, tends to you and cares for you as His sheep. He prepared the kingdom for you from the foundation of the world. And as a believer in Him, The kingdom is yours. His kingdom is yours. Jesus as our king is unlike any other king. Think back to the time of Jesus. The Israelites expected him to take on the role of an earthly king. They expected him to lead an uprising against the Roman rule and restore the nation of Israel back to its prominent place. But that wasn't why Jesus came. And he tried to shift their focus from these earthly things to heavenly things. As Christ the King, Jesus rules with earthly authority through earthly government and rules over all people. He is also the head of the church, ruling over his body through both word and sacrament. And as King, he is also at the center of all worship that takes place in heaven and where he is adored. 
He is worthy and deserving of all our praise and thanksgiving. And as Christ the King, we wait and watch for His return. In fact, in several places throughout Matthew's Gospel, Jesus repeatedly tells His disciples to watch and be ready for His return. And we as fellow believers ought to heed these words as well. And there are several reasons for that. The first of which is, if we fail to watch for Christ's return, we could end up losing our faith and fall away from the Lord. If I'm not watching for His return, I open myself up to distractions and temptations because I do not really then take things seriously. Think of the cartoon Calvin and Hobbes. Remember that little boy and his pet tiger? And they'd go down in the red wagon, barreling down this hill, oblivious to the fact that at the end of that hill, there's a cliff. They're blissfully unaware of the danger that lies ahead. If we aren't on the lookout for Jesus' return, we too can become blissfully unaware of what is to come. The second one is if we fail to watch for Christ's return, we can forget what it is that we have been given to do. The world and all things, our lives and all things in them belong to Jesus. We have been entrusted with different sorts and amounts of these blessings. But what remains the same is that we are to work for them. We are to work with them for the honor of our Lord. Think of this in terms of Pastor Chris's sermon last week about the parable of the talents. Each of us has been given a different amount of blessings or talents. We've been entrusted with them to make good use of them for our master. These talents or blessings have come to us by our Lord, and we are to utilize them for His glory. The third one, if we fail to watch for Christ's return, we can think the world does not matter, and in turn, His creation does not matter. Think of it this way. If our view of salvation consists of dying and our soul going to heaven to be with Christ forever, how can this world, this earth, even our bodies really ever matter very much. If we think this way, we lose our focus once again on God's creation and all that He has entrusted to us in to nurture and care for that creation. Fourth, if we fail to watch for the return of Christ, we can get discouraged and decide just to pull back and survive. That's quite tempting nowadays, isn't it? I may decide just to wait it out until I die and play it safe. The world can seem so dark in so many ways, and there is no end to the evil that is in this world. If we think of it this way, if I put my hope in either a certain political party or agenda, I will end up disappointed. If I place my trust in this particular program or in that geographical development, I will end up disappointed. Your hope and my hope are in the Lord who made heaven and earth and who will renew the sea and the sky and will raise all the dead. As St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58, Therefore, my beloved, therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. And the last one, if we fail to watch for Christ's return, we can miss out on the blessing of the expectation of His return. Because it is Jesus for whose return we are longing, even though He is with us, there's this very real sense in which He is not there. He's not fully physically with us without limit. He's gone away on a journey and is delaying. But He is with us in His promise and through His promise means of word and sacrament. But promise requires faith. And so often, there is still no sight. The new day of His full presence is coming and then there will be sight. Until then, we are to watch for Him, 
caring for one another until he returns. But many times, Jesus' words, beginning in verse 35, are misunderstood to mean that he is referring to caring for our neighbor as Jesus, Jesus oftentimes had commanded. But if we listen carefully, we hear him make a different reference to those who are being cared for. He said, beginning in verse 35, For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. That reference there in verse 40, to one of the least of these my brothers, that's the difference. So who are the brothers Jesus is referring to? In the context of this text and throughout the book of Matthew, when Jesus refers to his brothers, he is talking about his disciples. And in this section of scripture about the sheep and the goats, Jesus isn't referring to the welfare of those around us, regardless of whether they are friends or our enemies. He is referring to the care of fellow believers and more specifically, those whom have been called and instructed to share the good news of the gospel. When we see one of our fellow clergy or missionaries in need, we are to reach out to them and attend to those needs, whatever they may be. As his sheep, it is our responsibility to care for them as if we are providing care for our Lord himself. If Jesus puts it upon your heart to go into church work, it is up to us to provide for you and care for you along the way as you are trained and taught. For you are one of our flock here at Beautiful Savior. But this care that you offer in no way guarantees your salvation. Eternal life is given to us as a free gift, which we receive by faith in God from his mercy and grace. His son Jesus lived the perfect life you and I cannot. He suffered and died on the cross for our sins and the sins of the whole world. And on that first Easter morning, he rose from the dead, declaring victory over that death. As Paul wrote in our epistle reading for today, beginning at verse 20, But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. You are those who belong to Christ. You are saved by grace through faith alone in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The kingdom of God came to man in the person of Jesus. And he told his disciples many parables about what the kingdom of God is to be like. And they in turn proclaimed that once more God has acted in grace. In this way his rule has come down to us. For the gospel that we proclaim is the word of his kingdom. We all make up the community of believers. And as we confessed earlier in the third article of the creed, we are the communion of saints. And as a member of this community of believers, the kingdom is yours, both now and forevermore. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Please stand as you're able for the prayer of the church. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and a pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. 
for the holy Christian church, here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the Holy Spirit, to grant holy desires, good counsels, and just works, that we may live in harmony, peace, and quietness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the homes in which our people dwell, that all may celebrate and serve in the vocations that God has given. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those in distress of mind, body, or soul, for the sick and the dying, and those who have requested our prayers, including Kevin Meyer, Sue Booth, Diane Lee, Craig and Sue Kepi, Don McCabe, Lynn Ring, Monterey Morse, Heather Mum, Betty Gerald, Jean Enright, Stacy Lorth, Claudia Schrader, and Tracy Tripke, as well as for Tim, JP, Brody, Lynn, and Adam, Mary, Kurt, Vic, and John, Marilyn, Scott, Gwen, and Paul, John, Mary, and Carmine, Dennis, Dee, Shelley, and Diane, Annie, Harold, Lloyd, Skip, Pam, John, Donnie, Denise, Pam, and Rhonda, Irene, Deanna, Julie, Peg, Oliver, Maverick, and Tom, Renee, Mike, Pam, Braden, Cameron, and Amy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those who mourn, especially the family of Carolyn Bowden and the family and Julie Rolls family for her mother, the loss of her mother, Darlene, that they may know the consolation of sins forgiven and eternal life through Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, Christ, have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, merciful Father, you have appointed your Son as judge of the living and the dead. Enable us to wait for the day of his return with our eyes fixed on the kingdom prepared for your own from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear, read, mark, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Continue with Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Amen. We conclude our service by singing our final hymn, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is.
Uh, we want to remind you to turn in commitment, your commitment, 20, 2021 commitment, and restore his house cards simply for the purpose of budgeting so that we can know uh, in what, how much to spend, and how much we've got. So that's just being wise stewards. So please uh, turn those in. Uh, voters meeting at 9.30 coming up on Sunday, December 6th. And there will be quite a few things that we need to discuss, the, the most pressing of which is the budget. So uh, please, please be aware of that. Loose Change Sunday uh, coming up. So that's this week, actually. Um, so uh, I'm sorry, next week, excuse me, for the first Sunday of Advent. Uh, so uh, empty out those cars and pockets and drawers and let's put that money to work. Uh, Lutheran Hour Ministries Advent devotionals are available for your perusal. The Dorothy Day Food Pantry thanks us for all those items that we sent over there. Still in need of confirmation sponsors and Sunday school volunteers. And then Memory Work Challenge is coming up. I know that some of you have said it would be nice to have a shorter verse. This one is not that bad from Revelation 22.20. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. So the person who is testifying is Jesus. So he who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Maranatha. Come Lord Jesus. That is our memory work challenge verse for this week. Sign up for 2021 Flowers. Um, consider joining the Altar Guild. Lots of other things happening. Uh, we're decorating the church on November 28th before Advent, so come if you want to partake in that. Uh, I almost feel like we need to review all of it, so let me go through it all again so you can remember. I'm kidding. Are there any other announcements? Mary has her hand up. Yep. Thanksgiving drive. Yep. Right. Cash or gift cards are always available if you do not uh, get other stuff too. So that those are welcome. Yep. Thank you. All right. Any other announce? Any other announcements? Excuse me. Needing to be made this evening. Seeing none, then, uh, we will be dismissed. We have Adam and Mike here. I'm not sure to whom's been called to duty. Adam's going to do it. Uh, dismiss us. Uh, go with the Lord's blessing and with his peace of sins forgiven in Christ Jesus. And have a safe rest of your week.